Welcome to the Ask a Scientist video series. In this episode, we'll talk about the term genome equivalent, what it means, and why understanding genome equivalence is important for understanding depth of coverage in NGS. Genome equivalent is the amount of DNA in one copy of the genome. In turn, the number of genome equivalents defines your theoretical maximum depth of coverage. The amount of genome equivalence corresponds to the size of a genome. For example, E. coli K12 at a genome size of 4.7 million bases, genome equivalence equals 0.004 picograms. Compare that to a pine tree's genome, which is much larger at 23 billion base pairs, the genome equivalence is 21 picograms. The size of the human genome falls in between at 3 picograms. For the rest of this video, we'll focus on the human genome. A diploid human cell contains two genome equivalents one from mom and one from dad, for a total of six picograms. So how does this relate to coverage depth and specifically to the maximum depth of coverage that is possible with a given sample? Well, let's start by considering the simplest, simplest example, a single cell, which contains two genome equivalents. A common misconception is that to achieve greater coverage, you can just sequence more. But that's not so because during library prep, DNA is fragmented and converted into adapter ligated molecules. Fragments go through designated PCR cycles and duplicates are created. Once the duplicates are identified and removed or marked, the results are 2x coverage and sequencing more would just result in more of the same two unique molecules. Now, let's look at a more typical NGS methods using bulk DNA. 100 nanograms of DNA is typical input amount for many library preps. So since one human genome equivalent is three picograms, then 100 nanograms of DNA would equal 33,000 genome equivalents going into library prep. 500 nanograms, 165,000, and one microgram, 330,000. However, during library prep, some of the genome equivalents are lost due to the conversion rate, which equals the amount of input material converted to adapter ligated molecules. Typical ranges for conversion rates are 30 to 90% depending on the library prep. Following library prep here, assuming 50% conversion rate, you see how the genome equivalents are reduced. The next step for most target enrichment protocols utilizes a size selection step. And depending if you do a dual sided or single sided, you will decrease the genome equivalents again. This example shows the results of a single sided size selection where about 35% of the genome equivalents are lost. In target enrichment workflows, pre-capture multiplexing reduces the amount of genome equivalents further. As we just demonstrated, when you go into library prep with 100 nanograms or 33,000 genome equivalents, your final library after size selection results in 10,700 genome equivalents. If you now take this library through the entire target enrichment workflow without multiplexing, starting with one microgram into your hybridization, your theoretical maximum coverage would be about 10,725x. If you multiplex or pool samples before capture, the more you multiplex, the fewer genome equivalents you will have per library and therefore reduce theoretical max coverage. For example, a 12plex pre-capture equals a theoretical maximum coverage of 894x per sample. So what do you need to remember about genome equivalents? Well, if you attempt to reach that theoretical max coverage, you'll see an increase in duplication rate as you over-sequence and sequence more of the same. If you are able to start with more input DNA, you're able to increase that theoretical max coverage. You should choose a library prep with high conversion rates that leave you with more complex libraries. And the amount of genome equivalents you have after size selection and your desired depth of coverage determine how many samples you can pre-capture multiplex. Thanks for watching Ask a Scientist. If you have any questions or ideas for future topics, we would love to hear from you.